So the first thing you will do is you will add a mesh, a landscape, then you will add a camera. Press Alt R to reset its rotation. Go to the dimensions in the output settings, change it to 1024 and also this to 2024. Then you can play with the percent. 50% 50, 50 will give you a 212 resolution. If you set it to 200%, it will give you a 2048 resolution. Now if you will go and move the camera up a bit and you go to camera view. Now this still has perspective. You do not want to have perspective in this render. You go down here on the lens type, perspective, orthographic. You will change it, the orthographic scale to two because now it will be two by two meters. So now we will go to the camera, viewport display, enable the mist. Then you go to the passive settings that you can find in the view layer properties. You go to the passes, enable the mist pass. And then now you will go to the world settings. Now the new tab called the mist pass has appeared. You will press numpad 1 to have a side view and you see that this and this little dial here will change the mist pass starting and end point. What you can do is you can go to the world settings and have a very precise movement here. So and just take it and move it to be slightly like that. So it just goes over that. It does not need to be exact at all. And now you move the other one to be at the approximate zero point. It really is not perfectly important to have the upper one correct. It can shoot over. This one can shoot under, that's no issue. You will lose the edges to a harsh, um, harsh uh, little fall off if you would have it above the minimum height. Now, if you would render this out, you would have color information. You don't want that color information. You will go to the shader settings, you will go to world, and you will set the background to zero because you don't need that. If you now render it real quick. So now that it rendered, one can go to the compositor and he will now enable to the backdrop. Be sure that use notes is enabled. I usually put away those panels around here. You, you really don't need that in this case. Ah, oh, crap. All right. If you now preview using the node triangle add-on by pressing shift and control, you can see those images. Press V to scale back. Now go to the image, it's black. Go to the alpha, it's white because this is full opaque. Go to the depth pass and it's an even brighter white. If you now would go to the vector, normalize and add this node, you will see there is some black that's appearing. The same would go if you now preview the mist pass. But the mist pass does have even more black in here than the normal, uh, than the depth map. This is because in the world settings, if we go back, we have quadratic fall off, but we need linear fall off. So with this new setting, we will have to re-render it all and go back to the compositor. And if we now look at the mist pass, you see it's from gray to black. Can use the normalizer if you want to normalize it so it goes from white to black. But the black 
is the thing that is directly in front of us. We do not want that. We want it inverted. So after that, we put an invert node. Now this on the side is the parts that are low. And this in the middle is the part that is high. We can now test this out if we would go to a 3D view, add another plane, move the bit to the side, give it the material, delete the principles node, go to the material settings and the settings, enable displacement and bump, add a texture, viewer node, and if we would now preview it, it's pink. That's because you cannot preview the viewer node. What you would need to do is go to the compositor and save this as a render. What you would have to do for that is plug this invert output into the compositor. So if you would delete this now, go to camera view now, and re-render it. Now it has this as the image result. You save it somewhere on your desktop. And if you would now go back here to this plane, select the material and import the new texture that we just created. You will see it will be this. Now we go to the material and displacement, still activated. Now we go to the vector displacement. We plug this color into here, set color space to non color. Actually, no, in this case it can stay RGB. We'll see in a moment. <coughs> Stays as RGB. Push the displacement over here, and now you see nothing really happens. This is because in Eevee you cannot see that, and the viewport is always Eevee, except in the solid view. This one is workbench. Now we go into the rendered view and cycles, go to the feature set, set it to experimental. Now we go to the modifiers, add a subdivision surface modifier. Set it to simple and enable adaptive. And now you see it's pushed down. So if I would now take a little lamp. Mm. That should be right. And give this a diffuse shader. You'd actually see how it is pushed down. Now I saved it with compression, that's why those artifacts are there. But what you would need to do is now, in this case at least, invert the height. Uh, my apologies. You plug the color output into the height, not in the scale. Now it is correct. There's a little mess up there. Now the mid-level should be set to zero because zero is the point where it <coughs> the point where it was like yeah the zero ground. It looks somewhat like some main Minecraft landscape. But if we would now reduce the scale can easily be adjusted and played with for more high quality render one could go ahead and have a high quality terrain let's delete this one add a new landscape press f6 for more settings now on the subdivision let's set it to 1024 to have a really high mesh high res mesh. So now we have this mesh subdivided to a high poly count. 
and we will have to smooth it now. Now we can re-render it. And save this file. This black and white is enough. Color depth 16 bit and save. We would go back now. Add those two. Preview that. Add a lamp. Make this one a bit brighter. Now we'll see it has a way higher resolution. Now we can smooth this out too, using the shade smooth. And that's how you generate landscape, bake it into a displacement map using the mist pass, and then make a landscape back out of it using the displacement.